All right, so the topic of this talk is modern day books about vintage computers, or why do we still write about 30 to 40 year old computers? So what I'm gonna do is just have a brief intro. I'm gonna talk about a lot of the modern books that have, have come out by category, ones that, uh, that I either own or know about or that I think are, are best for you to take a look at if you have any interest in this at all. And then where to find more information about those if you're interested in actually acquiring them. So those of you that don't know me, I'm Randy Kindig. These days I spend a lot of time doing podcasting. There's actually four different podcasts that I either host or co-host these days. Uh, I don't actually get to spend a lot of time actually playing with any of the computers <laughs> anymore, it doesn't seem like. But um, just briefly run through these. So Floppy Days is my primary one that I started almost five years ago now. And I cover a lot of vintage computer topics. And uh, I usually try to get a co-host on there that is an expert on, on the computers that I'm talking about for that show. People like uh, Michael Tomchek or, uh, or Boise Pete or uh, you know, various other people who are an expert on what I'm talking about because I'm not an expert on this stuff. Antic is the one that I co-host with a couple other gentlemen that focuses just on the Atari 8-bit line of computers. And that one has been going for over four years now. Terra 80 Trash Talk, if you're interested in the Tandy line, Terra 80 line of computers. That one is fairly new, but we've got uh, a pretty big group of people who, who host that one. And then there's the Stan Beats History of the Personal Computer, which I do with David Grealish. Uh, basically, it's taking each chapter of that book and, and reading it. And uh, I think we've gotten through chapter seven so far on this. David was doing it himself, but had difficulty uh, finding time to keep it going, so I offered to help. And, and so now, uh, occasionally, I'm doing a chapter, and he'll do a chapter. So that's all the different podcasts. I'm involved with. So I'm really here to talk about books. I love books. I, I have a fairly large library of books. Uh, I really like the real thing because, you know, they just, I like the feel and the smell of them. And uh, digital books are great, but there's nothing like the real thing. And even though vintage books about the vintage computers are great, and there are a lot of them out there for all the different platforms, um, there are a lot of newer titles that have really started to come out in the last few years about these machines and, and I find those very interesting. A lot of them focus on the history of those computers or a specific computer or maybe just computer history in general. And it's just amazing how many people have decided to write a book on, on the topic. So my presentation is really just an ode to these authors and uh, a tribute to the love that they have for the machines enough that they spent the time to put together a book. So I'm going to run through some of the ones, again, that I'm aware of. Must have books. If you're interested in computer history, there are a couple that I think are the Bibles and that I've used quite a bit as I'm doing some of the podcasts on various machines. One of which is Fire in the Valley, the making of the personal computer. This is the second edition of that. There actually were, well, at this point, there have actually been three different editions. But the, the first one was, as I was told, I don't own the first edition. It was published in 1984. And I understand it's only about half the size of this one. So in 2000, the authors, which are Michael Swain and Paul Freiberger, added several chapters to it to kind of bring it up to date on what happened between 84 and 2000. So this is an excellent book. There was a movie made uh, about this. Uh, Pirates of Silicon Valley was loosely based on this book. And uh, you know, it's definitely one that you should have in your library. Another one is Stan Veet's History of the Personal Computer. This was actually written by Stan Veet himself, who was an early computer store owner. 
And he had a lot of interaction with some of the people who were really the drivers and, and the main uh, forces in the early computer days. People like Steve Jobs and uh, some of the Tandy people. And uh, it's a really interesting book. He talks about all of the things that happened in his store and all the interactions that he had. So I would definitely highly recommend that one as well. For general computer history, if you're interested in his, just history in, in uh, about all the different computers, I would recommend The Complete Historically Brewed by David Grealish. Basically, that's a compendium of all of the historically brewed newsletters that he put together back in, I think it was in the 90s. He actually had a newsletter at the time, and then later he produced a book where he, he pulled all those together into one book. There's the Computers and Illustrated History by Christian Worcester. Uh, I really can't tell you a lot about that one, that one, but I do have a copy of that on my uh, table, my exhibit table, if you want to uh, go through that one. Landmarks in Digital Computing, a Smithsonian Pictorial by Paul Ceruzzi. Uh, I actually interviewed Paul Ceruzzi about this book, and it's just interesting if you want to find out from the very beginnings of computer history till the more um, to the more modern times. When computing got his, got personal, a history of the desktop computer by Matt Nicholson. I actually just got this one a couple weeks ago in preparation for this show and haven't had a chance to read this yet, but a lot of good reviews on Amazon. And again, it's uh, general computer history. If you want history on specific computers, and I'm a lot more familiar with these books, on the Atari 8-bit side, there's Breakout, which is a fairly recent one, How, Atari's Got, How Atari 8-Bit Computers Defined a Generation by Jamie Landino, and that's definitely worth taking a look at. And Atari Inc. Business is Fun by Kurt Vendell and Marty Goldberg is is a great one. They have a follow-up book that I'll talk a little bit about later that they're working on. So this is the really early years of Atari and then um, they they are planning the second book which we'll pick up from there and talk about some of the uh, later years of Atari as well. But from the Atari standpoint that is definitely the Bible of Atari history. On the Apple II side so because Sophistication and Simplicity by Steve Weirich is an excellent book. And he actually originally had a, and he still has, a website where he documented uh, Apple II history and then later decided to develop a book on that. So he took a lot of the content that was on the website, added a lot to it, and then wrote the book. And it's just absolutely outstanding. On the commoner side, there are a lot of them. This seems to be a fairly popular topic. Uh, there's the Commodore, a company on the edge by Brian Bagnall. And again, I will talk a little bit later. He's working on a follow-up book that I think a lot of people are interested in uh, him coming out with. So that one pretty much covers the early years of Commodore with the VIC-20 and uh, the, the Commodore PET, and then he, he gets into the early years of the Commodore 64 as well. There's The Future Was Here, the Commodore Amiga by Jimmy Mayer. Commodore VIC-20, a visual history, which is a pretty recent one, and it has a lot of great pictures of VIC-20 and really talks about the history of that particular machine. Generation 64, uh, the Commodore 64 inspired a generation of Swedish gamers. I don't actually have this book, but it is available if you're interested in that. And The Home Computer Wars, which was written by Michael Tomchak, one of the leaders of the whole VIC-20 effort at Commodore. Uh, so his book is, is really good if you want to find out more about those early years. On the Tandy side, Priming the Pump. So if you want to hear or read about the T-34 
kerosene model one, the model three, the model four, that line of computers. Priming the pump is an excellent one with David and Teresa Welsh. Tandy's Little Wonder by Frank Swigert. I don't believe this was ever actually published in hard copy, but you can get digital copy of this, and it is uh, an excellent, it was one of the early books on Coco, the color computer history. And then more recently, Boise Pete and Bill LeJudas came out with Coco, the colorful history of Tandy's underdog computer. And this is an excellent history of the Coco from its early beginnings all the way through its lifetime. On the BBC Micro side, there is one that I came across called Now the Chips Are Down, the BBC Micro. I have a copy of that on the table. Actually, I haven't had a chance to read this one yet, but uh, I understand it's a pretty good history of the BBC. TI-99, there's the Orphan Chronicles by Ronald Albright. This is pretty much the definitive history of the TI-99 computer. Again, this one I don't believe ever came out in a printed copy, but you can get a digital version of it. So there are several books where people sat down and, and, and talked about or wrote about their history and growing up with computers, and I always find these interesting and fun to read. First one I want to mention is Terrible Nerd by Kevin Savitz, my co-host for the Antic podcast. It's Definitely, and maybe I'm a little biased there, but I think it's a pretty good, uh, pretty good book if you want to find out about growing up with the Atari. Commodore, Sorted Tales from a BBS Junkie. Rob O'Hara does a lot of different podcasts. He's great to listen to. He's, uh, his, his book is pretty good if you want to know more about growing up with the Commodore line of computers. There's a Commodore 64 Walkabout. And there's Diary of an 80s Computer Geek, which I actually just read a few, well, when did I read that? Earlier this week, I actually read it. It was a pretty quick read because it's a fairly uh, thin book, but it's really interesting to uh, hear his story about writing for uh, basically the ZX Spectrum it was the primary computer that he wrote for. Biographies, there are a lot of biographies out there, especially for people like Steve Wozniak and Steve Jobs, if you're, or Bill Gates, you know, a lot of the, uh, the really well-known people from those days. There are several books that you might get. These are the ones that I know of and own a copy of. But there are many, many more out there if you're interested in those. Specific computers, uh, maybe they're not history, but um, specifically, but maybe other topics. There's an Art of Atari book, which is pretty recent, by Tim Lapatino. Covers the Atari 2600, but also covers the Atari 8-bit line of computers and a lot of the, uh, a lot of the games and a lot of the, the artwork that was involved with all of, the, uh, all of those devices. It's a really, really nice, really colorful, really uh, a good looking book. The Apple II, new Apple II user's guide by David Finnegan came out a few years ago. And I know he just recently updated it for the Apple II anniversary. It's a 40th anniversary of the Apple II this year. And he recently updated that. I don't have the updated copy, but I had the original copy. And this is great if you just want to find out more about how to use an Apple II and he even talks about some of the modern upgrades that you can get for the Apple II. Assembly lines, the complete book. So there was a assembly lines series of articles that had come out back in the day and uh, they were all pulled together and uh, a book was made fairly recently about that. So if you wanna know more about assembly, Creating assembly language programs for the Apple II, that's a good one. Retro, uh, Retro Gamer magazine has several books on various machines. 
the Atari book is a very comprehensive, well, all of these are pretty comprehensive books about software that came out and, the, and all the different hardware that came out for these lines of computers. And there are the line of visual compendium books by Bitmap Books, several of those. I don't actually own any of these, but you can go out and, and get these as well. On the collecting side, if you want to know more about collecting, Retro Electro, Collecting Technology from Atari to Walkman, is an interesting one. It doesn't just talk about computers, but there are a lot of computers in this. It's basically about retro electronics, and there are a lot of pictures, really, really nice photographs in this book. And so I would certainly recommend it from that aspect. There's the Collector's Guide to Personal Computers and Pocket Calculators by Thomas Haddock. Digital Retro, Evolution and Design of the Personal Computer by Gordon Lang. And Collectible Microcomputers by Michael Nadeau is a, is a really excellent one. Uh, it does have prices in it, and those prices are based on what you could buy the computers for back when he wrote this book, which was in the early 2000s. So you probably want to ignore the prices, but it has some good information and a lot of good photography in it. Ones that are on their way to coming out, and I, again, there's a lot of interest in some of these books, Breakout. So there was the Atari one called Breakout, and I think it's just coincidental. There's also one called Breakout, how the Apple II launched the PC gaming revolution by David Craddock is getting ready to come out, I think, maybe even the end of this month. Yeah, pretty close. Atari Corp Business is War by Kurt Vendell and Marty Goldberg. As I mentioned, this is the second in the series. They were planning three of them. This is a long time coming. I still haven't pinned down Kurt and Marty exactly when this is going to come out, but I know they're working diligently to get this out the door. And Commodore the Amiga Years by Brian Bagnall. Again, this is one that uh, a lot of people are waiting for. This is a follow-up to his Commodore a Company on the Edge book. And uh, I think uh, this, this should be excellent when, when it comes out. And then Commodore the Inside Story is a Kickstarter that um, I don't know if it's still in progress or not by David John Pleasance, but it did meet its goal, so they should be producing this. Where can you find more information? So if you're interested in any of these books, on floppy days I try to, to interview as many of these authors as I can possibly contact and, and if they're willing to do so. So I've talked to a lot of them or I've talked to them as part of doing a show about a particular computer line. So I have talked to David and Teresa Welsh about their book, Priming the Pump. Stephen Wyrick on his Apple II book, Boise Pete and Bill Judas I've interviewed for the, when I did the, uh, co well I actually did an interview show with them just about the book and then I also had Boise Pete co-host the, the uh, Coco shows that I did. I've talked to Pepe Tazzo about his retroelectric book, Michael Swain and Paul Freiberger I've interviewed about their Fire in the Valley book. Paul Ceruzzi, Michael Nadeau I've interviewed, Michael Tomchak, Brian Bagnall, and Guacamo Vernoni about his VIC-20 book. So if you're interested in finding out more about those, you can go listen to the interviews that I've done for Floppy Days. Also on Antic, I've interviewed Kurt and Marty about their book and, and in fact, just recently had an interview with Kurt Vendell to try to find out where they stand on the second book. Amazon.com, probably 80-90% of these books you can buy from Amazon. Not all of them are available there, but most, most of them are. Or it might be through a Kickstarter. I mentioned a couple of them that uh, were done through a Kickstarter. Tandy's Little Wonder and The Orphan Chronicles, as I mentioned, were 
done only in digital form as I, as I know, so you can go download those. Or you can buy them from the author, like the Historically Brewed book you can buy from David Grealish. Or you might be able to buy them from websites like Bitmap Books. So many of these books are available on, to look at on my table. Uh, they're not for sale. I don't have any for sale here, but if you want to find out more about them, certainly you can come and take a look at them. I probably have three quarters of these books in my collection, and I'm trying to acquire more of them. So if you want to come and take a look at them, you're welcome to do so. Any questions? Okay, thank you very much.